All right, so last time we derived the uh, thermodynamic equation of state uh, for the, the dependence of the internal energy on the volume, right? Um, what was that? Right here. We said that partial of U with respect to V at constant T was T times partial of U with respect to T at constant V minus P. And we started that with... Uh, the fundamental equation, du is tds minus pdv, and so when we when we got this one, we said partial of u with respect to v at constant t is t times partial of s with respect to v at constant t, right? So you just divide through by uh, partial of the dv with a constant t, and then we said that this expression right here, we can derive that, uh, we can show that that's equal to partial of t with respect to, partial of p with respect to t at constant v using a Maxwell relation, okay? And what was that Maxwell relation that we based it on? dA uh, based on the expression for dA, right? Which is minus s dt plus v dp. We can do likewise for uh, the dependence of H on pressure. And so in this case, if you have dH is equal to TDS plus VDP. Okay? So imagine dividing this through by DP at constant T. So you have partial of H with respect to P at constant T is equal to T times partial of S with respect to P at constant T plus V times DP over DP is 1, so that's just V, okay? So that's your expression, but this derivative right here, we don't like that derivative in this expression because we want something just in terms of pressure, temperature, and volume, so we use a Maxwell relation to replace this, and we can get partial of S with respect to P at constant T from your... Uh, fundamental equation in the in the Gibbs energy representation. Okay, so we say, according to this, we can derive a uh, Maxwell relation from this. We can say, partial of S with respect to P, okay, at constant T, is equal to partial of V, this thing right here, with respect to T at constant P, okay? So that's your cross second derivative so with respect to T and P for G. So you can see here then that we can substitute negative partial of V with respect to T at constant pressure for the partial of S with respect to P at constant temperature. And that gives us a thermodynamic equation of state that we used earlier. Uh, so here you have an expression that shows you how H depends on pressure at constant temperature expressed solely in terms of pressure, temperature, and volume, things that are easy to deal with in the lab, okay? So given that thermodynamic equation of state, what would be, how would you answer the, this question right here? Calculate the, derive the formula for the change in enthalpy when the pressure of an ideal gas changes from P1 to P2 at constant T. So what do we want to solve for here? Delta H. Pressure is changed, so that's going to be equal to the integral from P1 to P2. And that would be your integration variable is dP. So what's going to be your integrand here? partial derivative of what? H with respect to P. And what are we holding constant? Constant temperature. So it's constant temperature. This is delta H at constant temperature. What would this be for an ideal gas? Well, we have the expression, right? Here we have the thermodynamic equation of state. We can substitute that for partial of H with respect to P at constant T. So what would that be? We just have to know what partial of H with respect to P is for an ideal gas. 
So for an ideal gas, okay, so you have partial of H with respect to P at constant T is, what was it? Negative T times partial derivative of V with respect to T constant P plus V. So what would that be? Negative T times, okay, ideal gas, you have what? V equals nRT over P. So what's the derivative of V with respect to temperature? Holding pressure constant. This is nR over P. So, so times nR over P. And then plus V. What's nRT over P? That's just volume. So this is negative volume plus volume. That's just zero. What this is saying is you can change your pressure for your ideal gas, but for as long as your temperature is constant, your enthalpy is not going to change. So if you plug in zero in this integral right here, what would this be? Zero. Isothermal process involving ideal gas, delta H is zero, as we've shown before. Okay? That's, that's what we talked about before. Okay. Uh, before we derive the expression Cp minus Cv to be equal to Nr for an ideal gas, right? Uh, actually, we showed that that was the case, right? And um, and we sort of derived it, assuming the thermodynamic equation of state. Uh, here's a, is a more general derivation for Cp minus Cv for anything else besides an ideal gas, okay? So uh, this, is for, this is applicable for anything. So Cp minus Cv, you just have to realize that Cp is partial of H with respect to T at constant pressure. Okay? Uh, so that's one of those derivatives you should know. And Cv is the amount of heat that flows into your system per degree change. So, and heat at constant volume is U. So that's partial of U with respect to T at constant volume. Okay, and so that's your general expression, just define, that's just your defining equation right there for Cp minus Cv. And what did we do here? What happened here? What did I do from, from this step to this step? All I did was I replaced H by U plus Pv. That's the definition of H, right? H is U plus Pv. I just copied this one. How did I get from this next step to this next one? Okay, so I just expanded this expression right here. So this becomes partial of, oops. So I have partial of U with respect to T, constant pressure, and And then P is constant, so I can factor it out, right? Times partial derivative of V with respect to T. Okay, that's the second term. Okay. And then, okay, so what did I do in this last next step right here? How did I get from this step to this one to this one? Well, uh, I wanted, I expressed this in terms of partial of U with respect to T at constant V instead of P. That way I can cancel it with this one right here, see? So if I know the partial derivative with respect to, of U with respect to T holding V constant, from that, how would I figure out the partial derivative if I were to hold some other variable constant, in this case, pressure? And so this is the identity that you can get, you can use. Okay. Uh, you remember how to derive that identity? So if I were to just start with partial of u with respect to t at constant pressure equals partial of u with respect to t at constant volume, how do I figure out these two partial derivatives here? I work backwards, right? I can say this comes from du equals this derivative 
dt plus something dv, okay? You're dealing with t and v as your independent variables. So the other expression, since the first one is a derivative with respect to t, there must be a dt that goes with that first term. And so the second term must have a dv. So what partial derivative goes here? Partial derivative of u with respect to being at constant t. So that's what goes in that second term. Partial of u with respect to v at constant t. And how do you get from this? Okay, so that's one. That's that's one. That's the one right there, right? So how do you get from here to here? Just imagine dividing through by dt at constant p. So dt over dt will cancel out, so that that disappears, and this becomes dv over dt. So that's dv dt at constant p. Okay. So that's what I did in this second, st in this last step shown here. Okay. So here, this partial of u with respect to t at constant p, that's this one right here. Okay, so this plugs into here. Let's take a look at those. So now, if I substitute that, what happens? I can cancel now partial of u with respect to t at constant v. So I'm left with this expression, p times partial of v with respect to t, plus this pair of the partial derivatives right here. Partial of u with respect to v at constant t times partial of u with respect to t at constant p. So carrying that through to the next slide, what did I do here? So this was what we had from the previous slide. How do I get from this one to that one? From this to this. What did I do? I factored this common term out. Partial of v with respect to t at constant p. And so what do I have inside? Pressure and so this is pressure is right here, and partial of u with partial of u with respect to v at constant t goes in there. Okay. What do I do next? What did I do next? What's partial of u with respect to v at constant t? We have that earlier. That's our we, from my thermodynamic equation of state. That's part t times partial of p with respect to t at constant v minus p. Right? Here's a derivation of that right here. Just to remind you, these two right here. That's your thermodynamic equation of state. So all I'm doing is I'm replacing this by something that's just in, in terms of pressure, temperature, and volume. Okay. And what do I do now, once I get to this point? Pressure cancels out. And I have T times partial of P with respect to T at constant V, which is this one, times partial of V with respect to T at constant V, which is that one. So that's your CP minus CV. And what do you notice about this expression here? It's all in terms of pressure, temperature, and volume, okay? And in fact, okay, we've shown this before. This is just alpha over kappa, right? And here's the derivation of that using the identity, this identity right here. And partial of V with respect to T is just alpha times V, right? Alpha times V is partial of U with respect to T, so that's your alpha times V. So what do you get here? CP minus CV equals TV alpha squared over kappa. Okay, so alpha squared right there, and then there's T and V, and there's kappa. Okay, and if you plug in, so this is the generic expression for CP minus CV. So what would be this value for an ideal gas? 
let's see. Temperature times volume. What's alpha for an ideal gas? Remember? 1 over T. So that's squared. What's kappa for an ideal gas? 1 over P. So this gives you what? Uh, let's see. This is P V over T, which is just N R. Okay, so C P minus C V is equal to N R. Okay, so that's it for partial derivatives.